Hi, welcome. Welcome to Evolve Life channel. Here the purpose is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope. And today's conversation with the afterlife is going to be with George Michael. And I actually have my Kindle here because I did uh, an initial video early on at Above Life Channel where I chatted with George Michael. So I wanted to check out what your, your comments or if you had any questions for George that I could chat with him about. And I am going to share with you how this particular conversation is coming about. I don't have a, a, a lot of burning questions or anything like that. I just want to have a casual conversation with, with George Michael in the afterlife um, because a couple of nights ago, so two nights ago, uh, it was really early in the morning and um, our youngest son was awake, not feeling really great, you know, sinuses and things. That can happen in Minnesota in the summertime. And so my husband was um, helping him out and getting him back into bed and I was kind of awake, kind of not awake. And I was very aware that I had, in fact, I said out loud, I said, I just had a conversation with George Michael. I think George Michael came to me in my dreams. And I don't usually have a lot of visitations in my dreams, but many of you might. So I think it's really helpful for me to talk about that a little bit. So I have said for years to clients that it is really an easy way to connect, not scary at all, for you to have dreams of your loved ones who are in heaven or who have, who have uh, crossed over into full spirit form. And because of that, it's, it's something that is really, really natural to be able to connect in your dreams, to have dreams with them and have great conversations in your dreams. Or even sometimes if you, you know, I can't, I just can't remember my dreams. Don't worry about it. Just feel into the feeling that you got from that experience. You know, you connected with your dad, you know, you connected with your sister, whatever, it, whoever it was. It could even be a famous person. Yes, that's right. You could have connection with the famous person in the afterlife. Now, how is that possible? It's po you don't have to know the person. You can just know them in a spiritual sense. Like you can have a connection to them energetically, which if you were a fan, you certainly do have that energetic connection. So of course you could contact them in the afterlife. It's no big deal. It's not like how they are now as human beings. There are celebrities and stuff where it's like fences and gates and bodyguards. It's not like that. And spirit, spirit to spirit can connect really easy. And that happens in energy. And energy can flow really freely and really smoothly, unobstructed in your sleep at nighttime. So you don't need to be scared about that. Uh, spirits don't just come and start bugging you. That's not typical, okay? Um, and so I just, I don't want you to be afraid of it, but I also want you to recognize that if you have dreams of loved ones, it's real. It's real conversation. It's real energetic connection. And it's not important what they said or what you say. It's the energy exchange, the feeling. Feeling and emotion is the most powerful way that we communicate as beings, whether it be spiritual beings, energetic beings, we are intuitive and we are in tune and energy is our language. Emotion is the closest thing to that. Words are not. Emotion, feeling, feeling, sensing, that is. All right, so George, uh, I was talking to him on a cell phone and I was like calling the UK and talking to George Michael like, and he, he said a few things and I can't even really remember. I should have wrote it down. Um, what he said but he was sharing some things with me and it felt like um songs or a band like what's up band or wasn't it wasn't it up band or so wasn't it up something i can't remember now because it's two days ago but um i don't know it was very strange and i felt i felt really um like he was coming to visit or I was going there on vacation or something and I was going to stay at the apartment or what I mean I felt just this like uh, I was trying to make arrangements or we were trying he and I were trying to communicate to make arrangements for my visit so it was really interesting um, very friendly very nice and uh, but felt like a distance so he was being really respectful I think of my space because like I'm sleeping. That's like a time that I don't do spirit stuff usually. So there is one other celebrity that I talked to or connected with or who I connected with in dream state. And then that prompted me to talk to him in real life. Well, that sounds funny. Who I connected with in dream state 
first energetically and then I channeled and I had a whole visitation, <clears throat> excuse me, a whole visitation with him um, in my dream state and that was Robin Williams. So it's happened before, but only one other time. So and then George Michael. So I thought, oh, George, let's just chat. I don't have any burning questions, but let's see if anybody uh, has that from our first little video. We just did a mini video. So let's see. Well, first I should mention he's here. So his energy's here. He's got um, this black leather jacket and these black aviator sunglasses. He's try He's like, he's he's fun. I mean, he's he's sweet and funny. Kind of he like has his collar up. He's like, I'm trying to be cool. I'm like, okay. I think he's uh, teasing me a little bit because I brought my shades out because it's really the sun is peeking in and peeking out. And if it gets too bright, I have to wear my shades because my eyes are super super sensitive. So. That's probably why, right? Okay, but he does look cool. I'm not supposed to tell you he looks very cool. Tell him I look really cool in the afterlife. I do. I look really. I look good, right? I look good, right? And I'm like, yeah, of course you do. And he's a little scruffy. I like that kind of scruffy look. And I want to just hang out with him. So let's just hang out. Like I want to get to know you. Like um, the stuff you loved about life. Um, the things that you think are really special, or just kind of that fun stuff. You know, like. Which favorite candy bar, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, why not, right? Let's have some fun. So I just want to share with you um, some of the comments that we've gotten for the first video. Now, this was a couple months ago, so this is a while ago. Um, George loved dogs. Is that true? They said George loved dogs and his last dog, Abby, passed away last month on April 18th. Oh, oh, George, Abby. You had a dog named Abby. I had a dog named Abby too. Oh, he's like, give me a little fist bump. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, Abby. Okay, so I see like reddish and, um, well, I see a couple dogs. So I had a dog named Abby, named after NCIS Abby, if you know that show at all. NCIS Abby, mm hmm Abby's so cool, such a cool girl, scientist girl. Abby, and she, um, she was a black and white Boston that didn't have an eye. And so we had her and so I see black and white that might be my Abby and then but then I see like a rusty color um, kind of a little bit of a low rider like with longer hair um, dog with a little bit of black it kind of looks like I'm not good with dog breeds it's a low rider it's not a it's not a miniature dachshund that's I have those and it doesn't look like that but it's smaller on that side it looks like some kind of maybe a terrier but it has long like straighter hair longer straighter hair um, probably something like that maybe and she might be a mix or something and then I see this big white like a fluffy white dog like a, almost like a Bichon or a Frise or whatever I don't understand what that is but okay puffy white dog um, but I'm looking at the rusty color one with a little bit of black. I don't know which one that is. He's like, oh, aren't they so lovely? And he's like giving her kisses and he's like, oh, she's with me. Tell them that she's with me. Mm, oh, kisses, kisses, give kisses to daddy, give kisses to daddy. That's what he said, give kisses to daddy. Mm, give kisses, mm, mm. And he's like, I can say. Oh, it's so cute. You are a dog lover. Oh, he's like, how can you not be? How can you not be? He's like, that's the judge of good character is the dog test. Does my, do they like dogs or not? It's not, a, it's not does his dog, do, does, does the dog like you? It's not that. It's does the person like the dogs, like genuinely. And he's like, you can't lie to dogs. I mean, they can, they, they smell you, you know, they know who you are. And so yes, Abby's with him. He's like, mm, get kisses to daddy. Mm, that's what he's doing. Mm, well, get kisses to daddy. <laughs> that's fun. Oh, he says, I knew we would have a good time together. He says, I told you we'd have a good time. We'd have things to talk about. He says, we can have things to talk about. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. 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 I believe you. All right. So then um, we've got another one. Oh, and yes, his eyes are hazel. Someone's clar clarifying for me. And the first video, I should have watched it before I recorded this second one because I don't remember it um, maybe a little bit here let's see if I can remember it's hard to remember when I'm doing psychic stuff uh, recall doesn't and the brain does not work so good which is probably good right so then the ego stays away um, well as much as it can it has, still has to be part of human life um, 
his eyes were hazel. And he's like pulling his sunglasses down. Like, do you want to see them up close? No, that's okay. <laughs> he says, they can be whatever color I want them to be now, he says. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. It's like, you know, there's no, you know, the human characteristics. And there's no, there's really not that. I'm like, I know. Um, your father was Greek. Your mom was from London. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like you're closer to your mother. Is that true? Yes. My dad was tough. My dad, dad was tough to be around, he says. Dad was tough to be around. It was, uh, I kind of feel like a falling out between the two of them is what he's showing me, like a rift, like a, just a not connecting. I feel like he came from a family that was larger, like he had brothers and sisters. That's kind of what it feels like. Um, or cousins or something. Like there's lots of family around, lots of families, like extended family. Every time you did so do something, um, big Greek family, he's like, there, there's everybody's around, everybody's around. And everybody has an opinion on everybody else's business. That's what he says, so. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point. All right, so his father was Greek. His mom was from London. That was where you were born, it says. Your real name is Georges, spoken Yorgos, Yogi. <laughs> he says, yes. He said, they are fans. People are watching. He says, okay, ouch. He says, no, that's good, Bridget. That's good, right? That's good. That's a good thing, Bridget. He says, that's a good thing. I'm like, okay, that's good, Bridget. <laughs> he wasn't trying to be mean. Um, his friends and family called him Yogi or Yog. His dogs were his children. Well, we already saw that. Um, he loved them so, so much, sending lots of love, she says. He says, thank you. He says, thank you, thank you. And he wants to say it. There's like a term of endearment, like, thank you, dear. Thank you, love. Thank you, lovely. Something like that. He's trying to say thank you, lovely. Thank you, love. Thanks, love. What is, does that make sense? He's like, yeah, say that, Bridget. That's right. I'm like, okay. I don't have any accents <laughs> except for Minnesota. <laughs> He's fun, you guys. <laughs> oh, George, you're so fun. He says, I told you we would have a good time. You just you, you didn't believe me, but I told you we were gonna have a good time. Okay, so then here's another one. Um, here's another fan. Oh, thank you. Yeah, somebody just said, thank you so much for your amazing videos on here. Thank you. See, I do read the comments, you guys. The nice ones, I ignore the bad ones. He says, there's always going to be critics. He says, it does it. You just, it, it's really hard because they can really, it can really throw you off. He's like giving me advice. And he's saying, they can really throw you off. And you just have to try. Do you have to do your best to ignore them? But it's hard, I know. It, it, and it hurts. It's hard to ignore it. You're critics. And it, and it hurts. It hurts. Oh, I know, George. I know. Trust me, it's icky sometimes. Being on YouTube. All right. Um, somebody said, says, I put a, a George Michael. You're going to love this. This is so sweet. I mean, he already knows this, but we're going to have this. This Your comments are helping with the dialogue, so thank you. Um, she says, I put a George Michael quote in my senior yearbook. The only, the only one you want is the one you'll never have. That's what she says. The only one you want is the one you'll never have. Oh, and she's giving you she's giving you compliments on the last Christmas song, which I love. And he says, Bridget loves Christmas. I know you love Christmas. I do love Christmas. So I love that song. <laughs> He's like, that's how I won her, her heart. Is what George is saying to me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right. I did not have a crush on you. I just maybe because I kind of knew that, you know, we would be more likely to be friends. Maybe that's why. I mean, but a beautiful man, indeed. Let me just say beautiful. You are very much a beautiful man. Very well kept. How about that? You take care of yourself. He says, well, not so much on the inside. Interesting point. Not so much on the inside. So the one she says, let's see, the only one you want is the one you'll never have. That's a George Michael quote. Do you want to expand on that? Or do you want to talk about that? Sorry, there's a big bug over here. He 
He says, well, that's pretty deep, isn't it? That's deep for a senior, for a junior or senior in high school. <laughs> He's like, wow, that's deep. Well, what do you think about that? Well, what do you think about it now? You know, I mean, you may have been a very different place when you were writing it. Or maybe you can talk about human life. It feels like what he's sharing with me, like he's making me feel. Um, and it's fe I'm feeling in my throat chakra right above my heart. So communication channel and the throat. So I'm feeling, I'm getting the information right here, but I'm sensing it. So it's clairsentient. So it's a um, feeling, sensing information. That's how this is happening right now. Um, and he's sharing that the only one you want is the one you'll never have is this feeling of not being able to be true to who you are and it's definitely about and he says it's not just about sexuality about loving who you want to love but that was a big pressure for me he's acknowledging that was my big pressure he says being able to love who you want to love and and being able to do it without hiding it that it was a a very difficult thing for me very difficult he's acknowledging and then he says but for you for any of you who are watching this video and listening to this conversation with George Michael he's saying that that could be your anything it feels like I know it feels like sometimes you want what you can't have but that's not true the only person that's preventing you from having what you really want what you desire is you. So be truthful about that. Like he's like saying, um, check your facts. Is it easy? No, I'm not. He's not saying it's easy to just be who you are because everybody would be. And most people aren't not a hundred percent authentic all the time. They're just not. And so he's saying that I'm not saying it's easy, but the truth is, you know, he's like, check your facts is what he says. Check your facts. Check your facts. Who's keeping you from your desires? Who's keeping you from creating the life you want? Who's keeping you from living the life that you really desire? You know, the healthy life, the positive love. Like who's keeping you from love? You, you're keeping you from love. And he's saying love is a big part, was a big part of his life. And, and he says, and maybe that's because I denied myself and I, came into the pressures. He didn't say, he doesn't say caved into the pressures. He's using kind of a different description of it. And I don't know how I would translate it in a, a different, it's almost like he's using slang, but I caved into the pressures or I succumbed to the pressures is how I'm gonna translate it. Again, remember I'm feeling this, so I, I don't know the exact term, but I feel like it might be a slang thing. He's saying uh, about feeling pressure and just doing what other people want you to do, meeting the expectations of your family, of your fans, of whoever, because that's the advice you're given is to do this. You have to do it this way. <clears throat> well, I think that that is a very powerful message for you to hear, for all of you to hear. So thank you to the person who put that quote in. He says, yeah, that's really, he says, that's really deep. But I think a lot of youth, a lot of teens, a lot of kids and and adults, young adults, he says, in particular, he's saying, now he's talking, he's like giving me a little lecture about young adults and adolescents and how that's a really hard time in your life. And even your, your early 20s, he says, you're trying to find yourself and you're trusting other people to help guide you. And they don't, they don't necessarily get you or understand you. And that's just true, they don't. Parents don't get their kids and friends don't get each other even sometimes. And there's a lot of um, you know obstacles or challenges and I think what what people really need what young people especially really need is just to believe in themselves and to get encouragement to believe in themselves and trust their own guidance instead of listening to everybody else's advice to trust their own inner advice like what they know instead of having to fight or rebel push against everything to instead go toward everything that feels right to them just being really, uh, the word I'm going to use is confident in what they know and what they want. Like focus on your desires, have a goal, like George Michael is saying. Focus on your desires, have a goal, and be yourself every step of the way. If you are yourself, check in with yourself. If you're, if you're being true to yourself, 
you know, and sometimes, and he's saying, and sometimes things change. Like sometimes you maybe start pursuing something and it's, you find out it's just not for you or you'd rather do something different and you can change your mind, he says, and that's okay. It's okay to change your mind. That's okay. Just don't change who you are at your, at your core. Like I say the word core, but he's saying, just don't change who you are inside. Don't let other people change you. You can do that on your own with your own choices and the experiences you have. You can change because you grow and you learn and you experience things, but not because other people tell you to change. That's George Michael. That's great advice. I think that's great for anybody of any age, any stage, okay? All right, let's see what else we've got. We've got some more here. Oh shoot, now my, I timed out on my tablet, George. <laughs> hey, I wanted to tell you, so I have a friend um, originally from Turkey near Greece and um, she gave me this beautiful bracelet here if I can show you it's an evil eye are you familiar with that he says oh yeah yes yes we have them everywhere he says they put them on doorways you know they you're supposed to put them right outside your door to prevent people from um, coming in like the bad people keep the bad people out so does it work George he says um, debatable that's debatable <laughs> He says, wouldn't it be great if it did, you know? And he says, sometimes it works, you know? But so I'm gonna show you guys my little evil eye bracelet. You know who you gave, you know who gave this to me? So it was a friend of mine, originally from Turkey, but now she's in New York City. It's in New York, so there's all sorts of cool stuff, creative stuff. All right, so thank you for that. That was a great comment. Um, oh, <laughs> this is funny. Somebody says, um, so another comment is, it's gorgeous, George, of course. And he's like, oh, he's like, oh. And he kind of puffs his cheeks up, big smile. And he goes, those cheekbones, George, you got the best cheekbones. He's like, oh, the rounder my face got, he says, the rounder my face got, the harder it was to see him. I'm like, yeah, no, beautiful, beautiful cheekbones, George. Gorgeous, George. Um, oh, and she said, even though you struggled with your weight, as you got older, that you were always so beautiful. Then he just went, gave you kisses, blue kisses to you. He's like, oh, thank you. He's like, he says, that is really sweet. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, um, society and the public and stuff really is critical of weight, especially for celebrities, like body image and, and aging, like the aging process, like people, it's so public, you know? I, I don't envy that. You know, maybe that's why I'm like not interested in being like a famous person because like I, can you imagine me doing YouTube videos when I'm like 80? Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll set that as a goal. He kind of laughs. He's like, oh, Bridget. By then there'll be some new technology. <laughs> You're right. There probably will be. He's like, by then it'll just be, he like points out to the third eye. He's like, by then it'll be just a telepathy television. Then you'll just telepathy television, everyone. You'll have your own channel. <laughs> okay, <laughs> George. I know I see a light colored dog, like a light, who's this? Like I see like a B name, like a Betsy or Boopsy or BB or something, baby maybe, BB, 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 Babs, Babs, I don't know. There's a little like a tan dog, long hair, um, perky little ears, like a terrier type. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but kind of like that. Um, and she's like a, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, very like a light khaki color, and she's like solid. She has a. He says, "Oh, on her tummy, she has a little bit of white." He picks her up and goes, mm -hmm, kisses her. He goes, "Like on her tummy, she's got some white. See, right here, <laughs> on her belly." Little belly, little. He's, he does love his dogs. He's like, "Go, go, 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 go." <laughs> oh, funny. All right. Okay, someone else is saying, "Oh, I loved you and loved your music. So sad that you're gone." <coughs> he says, I'm not gone. I'm not gone. That's a, that's a myth. <laughs> I'm not gone. Always in the heart, always in the music. Thank you. Thank you for enjoying my music. Thank you. He says, thank you. All right. I got one more question here. Let's see what we're doing at time. Oh, we're kind of getting long. Um, let's see if we got anything else. Nope, I'm not going to bop into the last last thing because it'll take us into way too long talking. So, okay, George. So I never did ask you what your favorite candy bar is. 
He says, it's something that you don't have. He says, it's like, a, it's kind of the closest thing. It's like a nougat with nuts and uh, milk chocolate. And he says, it's kind of like, maybe a little like your Snickers bar. Um, I feel like I could get the name. Is it an R name? I can't quite see. R-C-C-I-R-E-C? R-E-C-O or something? I don't know. I'm... It's tricky. Names are tough for me. You know that. Everybody's got their thing. Names are tough for me. Um, I wish you could give it to me in the afterlife so I could taste it. Because chocolate sounds really good right now. It's like milk chocolate. He says milk chocolate. It's really soft. Like literally like milky cream. And then it's like a nougat. And then I feel like there's some caramel in there or something or toffee. He says I think it's... I can't tell if it's caramel. It's hard. And then there's some nuts. So it kind of looks like a Snickers bar, but it's not a Snickers bar. It's something different. It's like that, but I, I don't know. If you are from the UK or if it's, a, is it a Greek thing or UK? He's like, no, it's the UK. He said, oh no, it's cross pond. It's London. He's like, London. Okay. Um, if you know what that is, put it in the comments. Okay. You are really pleasurable to hang out with. Maybe what we'll do is we'll get, um, I mean, if you want to hang out more, do you want to? He said, like, yeah, sure. He's like, I, yeah, talking is fun. It's fun, you know, it's enjoyable. Well, I'm talking, you're not, you're kind of talking, but I don't know, some of, some of you might be able to hear, sense, feel him. Do you want to get in the picture? Let's pretend like we're doing a selfie. I'm going to get him in the picture. But before I do that, um, make sure that you write in the comments if you have questions for George or if you have things you want to share with him or topics we want to discuss or whatever, um, go ahead and put them below. And uh, in the future, maybe we'll have another uh, chatting session, casual chat session. Okay, so come here really close. I'm really comfortable with you close. Oh yeah, you are. Your cheeks are really warm. Like, and his cheek is like squished right into me. Okay, I'm not one of your puppies. He's like, I gotta get my good side, Bridget. Like, he says, my head is so big. Isn't my head big? Like, he, his head is like a square and it's a little bit above mine and he's trying to scrunch down and get, I can feel the leather of his jacket like touching me right here. Okay, get really close. Okay, okay. Oh, I don't even know where to put my arm. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do a selfie, ready? Okay, I can get my good side. Get, get it where my like smile isn't so crooked. Okay, I'm working on that, so let's see. Okay. <laughs> he says, oh, you, oh, so oh, thank you. He's like, oh, look at those gorgeous eyes. He says to me, I'm like, oh, thank you. Uh, okay, look at George Michael's gorgeous eyes. You guys, I know this might seem silly to you, but this is so real to me. So um, feel the energy. All right, here we go. We're going to selfie. Ready? All right, feel the energy of George. Oh, thank you. He just gave me a hug. He's like, Mwah. oh, gosh, okay. All right. <laughs> like a little mm on the cheek, like a mm. I'm like, okay. But he stuck his, like, he didn't actually kiss me on the cheek. He was like right here. So he went, mm, like kiss, kiss. <laughs> I don't know if kisses were his thing, but thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. So cool in your leather jacket and your Levi's. Very cool. It reminds me of the outfit from, um, gosh, one of your albums. Was it Faith? That would be a good one to show up in for Bridget, just because the word faith is really positive and powerful. All right. So thank you, Mr. George Michael, for being here and hanging out to today. And thank you for your comments, because that's what spurred the the conversation here all right this is bridget with above life channel thank you so much for being here remember the purpose is to inspire your fear spirit and fill you up with hope i hope that we inspired your spirit today remember it's your life so live it thanks for being here <laughs>